Next night, we head to Exmoor, where the League Against Cruel Sports is well known for its tough stance on animal welfare. But now, members of the League stand accused of cruelty themselves for allegedly allowing their reserve to become overcrowded with diseased animals. Alistair McKee's report includes pictures of dead deer. This is Exmoor, 267 square miles of national park and home to one of Britain's most majestic animals, the red deer. But they're under threat. Tuberculosis is rife and those who love these wild animals the most could be making things worse. For nearly 50 years, deer being hunted have managed to cheat death by roaming here onto the Baronsdown Deer Sanctuary owned and run by the League Against Cruel Sports. This footage was shot in April by a member of the pro-hunting group, the Countryside Alliance. It shows a dying stag at Baronsdown being stabbed and then having its neck broken. The Alliance alleged it was evidence of cruelty, while the League believed it was all part of a dirty tricks campaign. A week later, the Alliance films one of its members confronting League workers removing another dead deer from the sanctuary. Go back to your diseased animals and, and just leave us alone, OK? My diseased animals? Yeah. Like, we, got the, we got the healthiest um, deer up around us. Is that right? And animals. Is that right? You, up here, have got right? the most diseased population of deer on Exmoor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it. Look at the manky looking thing. Look at it. What's, what's wrong with this then? What's wrong with this, Mr. Tilsley, in here? Been hit by a car? Yeah. I've never heard this dribble. Look at it. It's the size of a little red deer calf, mate. And on top of that. Gordon Pierce used to be the league's deer stalker at Baronsdown. His job was to maintain the health of the herd. That included shooting deer that were diseased or injured. Hound and calf starved again. A few years ago, Gordon noticed that the number of sick deer was rising sharply. Earling hound starved, very important this. There was this one particular deer calf. I was called in to deal with it and um, I just walked up to it, put my finger up through its nose, its face. Uh, it couldn't move, it couldn't bat an eyelid and um, I just walked back and it was dealt with. And that was what got to me. They're paid to be guardians of the deer, if you like, and that's just not looking after it. Around that time, the British Deer Society, tipped off by the local hunting community, examined eight deer carcasses found on the edge of Baronsdown. All were riddled with TB and would have suffered slow, painful deaths. Dave, you fed you bananas regularly. John Fletcher is a vet in Scotland who's worked with deer all his life. TB is a familiar issue. If you see significant numbers of animals in poor condition, then you might be um, alerted to the possibility that, um, that there is tuberculosis. It's, um, it's a likely cause of animals, large numbers of a large proportion of a population being in poor condition. The deer that are coming out. Guy Everard Thomas runs a farm near to the sanctuary. He's also a member of the Countryside Alliance. We first became aware that there was a problem when we found carcasses in the bottom of this valley here. There's a little stream which you can probably just see through the trees there. Yeah. And I think the first occasion I found a hind and a yearling um, that was dead. We then subsequently found a pricket in a very bad state. It was sent up to Bristol University who did a post-mortem on it, and they found that it had bovine tuberculosis and what they described as a chronic acute lungworm infestation, a um, really, really bad infection of parasites. What kind of concerns do, do, does the finding of, of, of TB infested animals bring to a farmer? You know, what are your big well, worries? Bovine TB is a big worry for all cattle farmers in this area. Um, we're under restriction at the moment for bovine TB. So it is a concern. Today, Gordon the deer stalker is taking me to a spot at the top of the valley where you get an excellent view across Baronsdown. But to me, that deer is sick. And when deer looks yellow, you've got problems. 
That's a deer that needs taking out. As well as watching the deer, Gordon films them with his camcorder. A small herd is grazing. A bright red Land Rover approaches. There is a shot and a hind goes down. I reckon over the past four years, they've taken out perhaps 120 with TB, bearing in mind it's not just a problem to them there. How much is the herd of Exmoor deer at risk over this? So it seems there's quite a body of evidence to suggest the League haven't been getting things right for quite some time. Well, they've invited me to have a look around so I can ask them myself. We do what any responsible landowner would do, which is if we see animals where we have suspicions, then we supply samples to DEFRA and, and they analyse them. And if we have suspicions, we dispose of the carcasses through um, sending them to a sort of Nakaman rendering, you know, officially licensed destruction person. When was the last time um, a deer was suspected of TB here? The last one that I'm aware of was the one that um, was involved in this incident in, in, in April. And obviously we are concerned about that because we're doing everything that we can to do what the advice is, which is let the wildlife be wild and don't interfere with them and don't seek to, in quotes, manage them. But others believe the herds must be managed with systematic culling to keep the animals healthy. We, we have no predators in, in Britain now, apart from man, that predate on red deer. So anybody who's trying to provide a sanctuary from hunting may act with very good intentions, but it's ill-conceived because unless you remove the surplus, the population will grow and grow until very likely disease attacks them. So it sounds like managing the deer population is essential for their health, and the League do admit to shooting the occasional deer. Only if they are clearly terminally ill and suffering then we would alleviate suffering simply to stop the animal suffering any more distress than it already is, but not for any other reason. But, but by doing that, you are appreciating that there is sometimes a need to do that, and yet you yeah, go, but, against, but it's a you very, go against the science that says no, that actually a, you might need to do no, that not to a slightly that. greater extent. No, it's a very different thing. What other people are doing is, is almost setting themselves up in a godlike way to determine who shall survive and who shall not, and that is something we will not do and we do not agree with. So what about that Countryside Alliance video we saw earlier? Is this evidence of cruelty? Well, the RSPCA concluded that the League Against Cruel Sports had no connection with the incident whatsoever. It seems that a former park ranger was passing in his car when he saw a deer by the side of the road in a certain amount of distress. So he decided to put it out of its misery, which he did in a rather curious fashion. As autumn gives way to winter and another banned hunting season passes by, the row over diseased and starved deer will emerge again, despite their mutual interest over these beautiful animals. There seems little chance of the two sides finding any common ground over their welfare. If I allowed my sheep to get into the condition that those deer were in and I allowed it to happen continuously, I wouldn't be talking to you now, I would be in prison. Surely to goodness, in a national park whose sign is the deer, you know, the deer of Exmoor, to provide a place that people can come and see the deer, enjoy the deer, surely that is a good thing. <laughs>